Photoshop can open, edit, convert and save a wide variety of image types. The primary ones that you are likely to be using, and I've got one each open in Photoshop here, are raw images which are created by cameras, digital cameras, in what you might call native mode. That is, the images are not compressed. Uh, the image from the sensor is directly recorded to the recording media and saved. It has extra useful metadata. The image files are very large and they are widely used by professional photographers to give them um, access to uh, editing things like exposure and ISO settings. Often uh, photographers won't edit raw image files in Photoshop. They'll edit them in an application like Lightroom or Aperture where they can just manipulate how they took the photograph. Nevertheless, Photoshop can handle these images and over here you'll see that we've got an image in here. The background is locked. Photoshop can do many different types of edits without you uh, converting the image to, a, to a, um, a native Photoshop layer. So for example, we can adjust the levels here. We can put an adjustment la layer on top and adjust levels quite successfully. There we go. We can also add uh, hue and saturation adjustments. These would all can be considered quite crude by a professional photographer, but nevertheless we can do that. So there's hue and saturation. Uh, if we wanted to put a layer mask on, however, I suspect that Photoshop is going to want to convert the layer to uh, the image to a regular Photoshop layer. The next file format we've got in here is a native Photoshop document, PSD. You might acquire those or buy them from an image library. And of course, when you edit and manipulate uh, or create images inside Photoshop, you will be saving to the PSD format. You should always save uh, your images in PSD format because it retains all of the layers, all of the adjustment layers, um, all of the editing you've done, um, ready for you to go back and tweak the image. The next file format I've got in here is a JPEG. Again, you can see it over here and the background is uh, locked, but we can do a similar range of edits to it without unlocking it as we can to a raw file. Uh, so Photoshop can handle JPEGs without decompressing them. That's no problem. Of course, it can create them and it can open them. The same can be said for GIF images. Again, these are in indexed color mode because they have a color palette that relates just to the uh, colors inside the image. And there's another video on Planet of Tunes about color mode that explains this in more depth. But if we look up here in image mode, you'll see this is indexed color. By the way, if we go back to JPEGs, you'll see this is all RGB. And the same, of course, for the PSD file here. And the same, it should be the same, I think, for the raw image file, yes indeed. Final image file format we've got here is the PNG image file format, which is widely used for uh, mobile uh, apps, but particularly for websites. The main advantage of a PNG file is that it can have transparency. Uh, this is just a simple circular image here, but if this was placed on a website, it would merge seamlessly with any background it was placed on. And if this was had a blur on the edge here or an irregular shaped edge, again, it would um, integrate seamlessly. So PNG is a, a great file format for the, for the web. Uh, the only disadvantage with it is that it's a, quite a large file format compared to a JPEG or a GIF. So those are the primary file formats you are likely to be opening, editing, converting and saving inside Photoshop.